guys, today I would like to show you how to pause and resume your Microsoft Fabric capacity and how to scale it up and scale it down. Pausing and resuming is pretty straightforward operation. It gives you possibility to pause your capacity when it's not needed. So if you have a scenario that capacity should be online for a specific time frame, then you can pause, pause it, and then you will save some money. The same is with scaling. You can scale it up, so changing you can change your capacity SKU from lower, like F2, to higher, to F8, F64, whatever, uh, and vice versa. You can scale it down, so change it from F64 to F2 or similar. Uh, before we'll go to the Azure portal, I would like to tell you that both operations, pausing, resuming, and scaling, uh, you can perform using graphical interface in Azure Portal, but you can have also script, automated script, like PowerShell script or Python script using SDK that will pause it for you automatically. Today, I would like to show you both ways. Before we go to Azure Portal, I would like to say a few words about prerequisites. We are right now in the Azure documentation. And uh, for pause and resume, you can see we have only two prerequisites. First, if having FSQ capacity, and then we have to be fabric administrator to perform this action, or we, have, we should have following permissions. So capacities read, write, suspend action, and resume action. For scaling, we also have some prerequisites. We have to have FSQ capacity, and we have to be capacity administrator. Good. So we know our prerequisites. Let's switch to our portal to see how to pause and how to resume our capacity. As you can see, I have right now active fabric capacity. To pause it, I can use button that is available on top. I can just click it, confirm this operation, and after a few seconds, it should be paused. And right now, I am not paying for compute of this capacity. If I want to resume it, I can use the same technique. So use just the button on top. And the entire capacity should be available in a few seconds. With scaling, we need to switch to the scaling tab. So let's click it. Right now, I have F8 capacity with 8 capacity units. And if I want to switch to any other SKU, I can just select it and then select Resize. So let's click it. And after a few minutes maximum, it should be, uh, it should be F2. Yes, as you can see, it took just a few seconds. One remark here. If you are scaling between F2 and F64, each, this operation should be almost instant. But if you are scaling to the higher SKUs like F128 uh, or 256, it can take a few minutes. As you can see, those operations from graphical interface are pretty straightforward. Let's switch to Visual Studio Code to see how it works from the script perspective. Okay, we will start creating our script by providing three variables, tenant ID, client ID, and client secret. To make it correctly, we need to create app registration. So create service principle that will be used to perform all the actions on the fabric. So to create it, we need to search for app registration in Azure portal and just click new registration. Here we need to provide a name, so I will call it App Fabric Automation. And all the rest settings we can leave like it is with default. And then we can click Register. And uh, almost instantly we'll get a result of it. And from here you can see we can get application or client ID. We can paste it in our script, uh, tenant ID, 
we can also paste it to our script and client secret client secret we need to generate so we need to switch to certificates and secrets here we can add new client secret provide description if needed and uh, how long it will be active uh, as you can see by default after six months this password will expire for testing purposes it's okay so i will click add and now i have a value and uh, that will be copied should be copied because when i will close this window this value will be hidden so i will just copy it and paste it into my script of course in productive deployments please be aware that this client secret should be kept in some secure store like azure key vault and so we should not hard code passwords in our scripts that's for sure in our testing scenario that's okay so i will i will leave it like it is mm. to perform all those actions from script we have to give to our app permissions to do it so first of all let's go to access control add role assignment then under privilege administrator role select contributor next select members and we need to find our application if you remember it was called app fabric automation so select it review and assign and after a few seconds our app should be contributor on this specific resource we can go also to capacity administrator click add and we can assign our app as a capacity administrator so we have to select it please remember to save it and now our application has all the needed permissions. We have three main variables, so let's introduce additional ones. First one is operation. Operation will determine which operation will perform. So it can have values like resume, suspend or scale. If we are scaling, we have additional variable called SKU where we can define target SKU. Uh, of our fabric capacity then we have uri that is determining which uh, let's say fabric capacity we want to uh, work on so first of all it looks like that that we have management azure com subscription id of a subscription that we need to paste here then resource group where our fabric capacity is located name of this resource group providers, Microsoft Fabric, capacities, and name of our fabric capacity. Uh, we have all our variables, so we can switch to um, our REST API request. First, in some requests, we need a body. So this body looks like that, that we are providing some properties like grant type, it's client credentials. Then we have client ID where we are passing our variable with identifier of our application that we registered. Client secret, it's a variable where we store our secret of our application. And the resource is management Azure com. This body will be used to authenticate to Azure. So authentication is pretty straightforward in PowerShell. So we are using command called invoke rest method method will be post uri is login microsoft online com with tenant identifier in the uri oauth2 token as a content type we are providing application uh, url encoded and as a body we are sending this body that we prepared uh, above then uh, we are storing in our variable called access token access token that we get from the above mm, request this access token will be used to perform further activities. Header of our activities uh, will be also pretty straightforward. So authorization, it will be bearer token. So we need to provide bearer and then access token that we received in previous step. And content type is of course application JSON.
now we are ready to send request. Uh, so first of all, we have a switch statement and depends on the operation variable will perform different requests. We have scale. Scale is pretty uh, simple to perform as a URI. We are just using the main URI that we prepared previously and we are attaching also API version. Then method is patch. As a body, we are not sending any administration settings. We are sending SKU. As a SKU, we need to provide proper uh, acceptable SKU name. So it can be F4, F64, and so on and so forth. For that, we are using our variable that we defined in the beginning. And as a tier, we are always setting it to fabric. We can add also some tags if we want. But in this case, we are just skip this part. And of course, we are converting all of it to JSON. We have also two additional operations, as you can see, resume and suspend. Uh, resuming is pretty straightforward. The only thing that we need to define is a proper URI. So to the main URI, we are attaching or adding resume and API, API version. A uh, method will be post. There is no body. Uh, for suspend, it's very similar. The only difference is that we are concatenating to our string that contains URI uh, suspend keyword. Uh, and uh, what else we can say? Uh, if there is a different value provided, switch will throw an error. Okay, so only three values we are accepting in the script. So it will be resume suspend or scale any other values provided will throw an error and uh, sending the request is very similar like we saw when we logged in so invoke rest method then the method itself and then uri headers header that we prepared in the beginning and then body uh, response should be sent like that Of course, we send a uh, request to scale up, scale down, pass, or resume. Uh, but we don't know from the script perspective it, if it was uh, OK or not. So this variable response that is keeping the response from the API, we can check. And uh, if there is no content returned, we can just write, write output to no content returned. We can also add some catch try catch if something will happen with the script so all those operations we can put in the try section and then catch that will throw an error and display it on our uh, screen if we want of course we can do some additional activities that will uh, make our um, let's say script more uh, resilient okay so our script is ready, so let's go to Azure Portal and try to scale it down, pause and resume. Let's see our script in action. So as you can see, my capacity is right now in the active state, so we can try to pause it. So we need to set operation to suspend and just run the script. As you can see, our request returned no response. If we'll refresh our page, our capacity should be paused. Yeah, as you can see, it's paused. Let's try to resume it. So we need to provide operation as resume and run it one more time. Okay, request executed immediately let's refresh and capacity is active as we suspected let's try to scale it up and scale it down so right now our sku is f2 so let's try to scale it up to f4 so we need to change operation to scale
run it. Okay, sorry, I clicked twice, but as you can see, right now we have response that SKU is right now F4. Uh, I noticed that on the main page, sometimes, sometimes it's not visible. It takes some time to be visible, but in this case, it's available uh, immediately. So it's F4. Let's try to go back to F2 so we can select F2, run it. Yeah, let's try to refresh maybe the entire page. Yes, it's F2. So as you can see, script is pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. You can reuse it, you can tweak it. Of course, you can add additional operations to the script. Uh, maybe you don't want to do it from your desktop, so you can put it uh, in Azure, in, for example, in Azure Automation to perform it on, uh, based on schedule. Of course, please remember to not keep your secret in a clear text um, and uh, secure it properly. Uh, all those operations are pretty straightforward. You don't need a special skill to perform those operations. I encourage you to go to my blog to read all the details about all of those uh, things that we showed today. For now, that will be everything. So thank you for your time and see you next time.